G'day guys, this is a supplemental on the previous um, TMAO video that I did just to cover the um, the stroke part because some people may say, well, you know, it doesn't cause that but it causes hemorrhagic strokes and stuff like that. Well, let's cover that properly in that regard and, uh, and clear up um, of that information. So this is um, sort of TMAO levels that you find in food. Obviously, if you take a look, carrots have more than beef. Um, TMA. And also they have more TMAO as well than, than beef, chicken. Lamb's liver has more um, TMA. But even in the other ones, you have to go for a pear to get lower in fruit. So even potatoes have more and stuff like that. We don't see massive, we don't see higher hemorrhagic um, strokes in people in these in um in Europe or anything or North America or whatever else that are eating a lot of these things. Even dairy has higher. If you exclude liver. Now, seafood. When you go to tuna down here, tuna is very popular in, in Japan. As you can see, doesn't have as much TMA or TMAO. So it's not the TMAO because they consume quite a bit. They do consume other seafood and other seafood is very high. As you can see, whiting is very high. Cod, look at cod. Cod is one of the highest. You see, massive in comparison to any other thing here, both in TMA and TMAO. And we know that the British, you know, the Irish and everyone else consumed a lot of cod, you know, cod liver oil and stuff like that, you know. So they were getting massive amounts of TMA or TMAO. We never had an epidemic of... Um, uh, you know, in Britain, historically, of hemorrhagic um, strokes. Hemorrhagic means, you know, blood related. We're not, you know, so, you know, where you, your blood is thinned out so much that uh, your internal bleeding, basically. That's what we're talking about. So as you can see, massive amounts in comparison. Halibut, herring, very high. All these ones are basically staples in the UK, have been for the, and they are very high. You know, Greeks, squid, very high. Octopus, quite a bit, you know. So trout, another one, quite high. You know, tuna that the Japanese consume a lot isn't that high. They consume quite a lot of tuna. Um, both yellowfin and bluefin tuna. It's very popular there for, you know, for their um, raw fish type um, dishes and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it's it's got less TMAO than actually all the red meats and a lot of vegetables and fruit and vegetables. And it's only slightly, um, uh, not that higher. It's one of the lowest when it comes to the fish area as well. So we can't say that it's actually the TMAO. Um, yes, they do consume quite a bit, but you know, if you're if you're consuming certain other foods, you're gonna be getting multiple times much higher. Ten orders of that. Um so what is it? They've done experiments. It's the omega threes, too much of them. Okay. So even this study, they did a rat study. And I'm not, I didn't get access to it, so I'm not actually going to go through the rat study. If people want to go and get access to it, they can go and do it themselves. That's their business. So, and it's basically, you know, omega-3s, intra, intracerebral hemorrhage in rats. So if you give rats quite a bit, you're going to get this problem. That's the problem. It's excessive amounts. 
That is why in the Japanese, the incidence of, str of hemorrhagic strokes in Japanese is twice compared to Western countries. It's their excessive omega-3 consumption because they're consuming so much fish in comparison. Got it? That's the reason. It's the omega-3s, excessive. You know, we're not supposed to, you know, having a bit of fish now and then is fine. You know, there's not a problem with fish. But when you consume far too much, you end up thinning out your blood, you know. So as I point out here, that dietary intake of omega-3 fatty acids has been associated with decreased clotting ability. That's true. And even it's not only associated, there's also mechanistic studies that show that it thins out the blood and increases an, an increased risk of hemorrhagic strokes. That's well established in the literature and in experimental stuff like they've done here with this experimental rat. So it's not merely associated. It's, a, you know, this is what I, I, I get really annoyed. You know that there's more than just an association. There's actually good experimental evidence when it comes in a lot of um, animal models showing quite clear excessive amounts of omega-3s do this problem. It just does it. You know, it just thins out the blood far too much. And it's the other reason why, you know, um, certain blood thinners cause um, as well. When you thin out the blood and reduce the clotting factors too much, you create um, the ability to for the blood vessel to bleed. It's well known when you thin out the blood. And it's not only omega-3s, anything that actually thins out the blood, blood thinners and stuff like that, will cause hemorrhagic um, incidence, whether it's a hemorrhagic stroke or a hemorrhagic incidence within the actual person. That's well established. That's what's causing it. Nothing to do with TMAO, you know, in terms of uh, consumption, the Irish and the British in the past with cod were actually consuming way more. As you can see here, the levels, 5,000 compared to, so even if the, even if, um, uh, they are consuming 10 times, they'll only get, um, you know, 30. Let's just do the numbers to see the comparison. It's just ridiculous. So 5135.3, and this is all on 227 grams. So let's say you're consuming, you know, two kilos of, uh, well, probably not for the Japanese, probably a kilo of tuna every day. No, let's go for two kilos. Let's say uh, they don't consume that amount. I know it's, uh, you know, well, well, I said, but I'm just going to go for the extreme levels. Divided by 227. So that's our figure, 8.81. I'll copy that. And then we'll go 301.8, oops, times 8.81.8. So even there, what the difference? You divide that between 5135.3 times 227, oops. That's about 118. That's not even a serving. A serving is 170. So even if a British person was doing 170 of cod, a serving, which is basically six ounces, that'd still be getting more TMA than, um, uh, than the actual um, Japanese person consuming two kilos Okay, two kilograms times 2.2. We're talking about 4.4 pounds of tuna. The British person who's eating the cod, um, in the past, cod was very popular. Though. He didn't have the issue. So 1983.7. Oops. The 19.9, let's just do that, the, T, the actual TMAO. 
times is that that amount. The difference in terms of TMAO compared to the same quantity is like 11 fold, 11 fold. So, you know, when we're talking about 11 fold, you get the equivalent. So if somebody's actually having, you get the same level of TMAO in this case, we did the TMA and we know that there is a conversion within the liver. So it's the TMAO that's, you know, you know, and it's maybe those people that can't, you know, that's another speculation as well with the TMA, which I don't think is re really real anyway. And if, That's right, 11, 11 fold. So we go 170, which is six ounces, just for people out there, times that is nearly, again, nearly two kilograms nearly that the Japanese person would have to consume. So we're talking about 4.2 pounds. You know, it's not going to happen. The reality is TMAO and TMA, um, the quantities don't match up for the effect. And we know that blood thinners, we know omega-3s are causing it. That's the reason. That's the real reason and nothing else. So that was just to cover the hemorrhagic stroke issue, just in case any, any lagoon or anyone tried to make an issue of it. You know, that's the real reason. It's excessive blood thinning that is actually causing this problem and nothing to do with TMA or TMAO because the foods that other populations have consumed in vast amounts, both in the past and recent past, in comparison to the type of fish that the actual Japanese consume is a completely different one. So, you know, they do consume other seafood as well. But the comparison was because they do consume octopus and squid and other, and other fish as well. So they do get slightly higher um, in that. But we're doing a comparison, not with the modern day people that hardly eat fish at all nowadays, seafood um we're doing it with a comparison of people in the past and if you go into the past people were eating massive amounts in europe and other parts um fish products like 10 to 20 times what they consume today and didn't have any of those issues back then when they were consuming certain types of fish that had excessively high amounts of tma and tmao which quite clearly makes it even that, you know, if they were consuming so much back then, TMA and TMAO, and getting no health problems, maybe it was heart protective. Maybe it is heart protective, TMAO, by lowering blood pressure and, uh, you know, being a, a natural diuretic. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's sort of making my case even more and more, even this video. So this is just basically to cover, um, you know, what I left out in the previous one. So just to, to cement in your own mind that this TMA and TMAO is just bullshit. It always has been bullshit. You know, academics finding associations and making a big thing and the Vaguna Rice community jumping off on that pony and riding it um, like mad because we know what they like, you know. They'll take any pseudoscience to basically ride it like mad because you know, that's all they've got, you know, because their own misanthropic outlook and dietary approach is that. It's a, as a, uh, a few other people in the past have called it, the Church of Anorexia Vegana, um, as Bach calls it, and other people have called it the Kill Cult, because that is exactly what it is. Anyway, I hope you liked my supplemental on this issue.
See you.